I, I'd like to thank the organizers, uh, not not just for inviting me, but for I mean, organizing this seminar and turning this kind of global crisis into I mean something positive. So it, it's great that we can meet like this. Uh, so I, actually, I always wanted to go to India, but I never quite had the opportunity. So now, now I'm uh, kind of a little bit in India, in some sense. Uh, so I will see if I can share my. Where did it go? Here it is. Okay, so I, I hope you can see this. Uh, uh, so as Garrett said, I, I will talk about the Canada Russell identities. Uh, and the plan, okay, sorry, now I can't change the slide. Um, yeah, sorry, this was working before. Um, yeah, now, now it's working, okay. Uh, so the, the plan is to first say something about the Rogers Ramanujan identities, because the, those were really what I think inspired the Canada Russell identities. Uh, and then uh, uh, Canada and Russell actually had lots of identities. And I will not, what, what I will say will just be relevant for a few of them. And then I will actually focus on just two examples for the purpose of this talk. Uh, and uh, first, I will talk about how to reduce this. So, these identities I talk about will be triple sums. First, about how to reduce them to single sums. But then there's still some problem to compute the single sums. And I will give two examples. So the, the first one is a bit easier. So that was already proved by uh, Brinkman uh, uh, and collaborators. Uh, and the second one is uh, newer. Um, so here's the Roger Ramanujan identities, which I'm sure uh, many of you have seen before. Uh, so here uh, on the Left, we have this uh, huge sum quadratic power, and then divided by this thing, which you could think of as some Q extension of the factorial. Uh, and what's on the right here is so this is some infinite product, and the exponent of Q uh, increases by five in each step. So what we have here is one minus Q times uh, any power which is congruent to one mod five, and then over here the powers that are congruent to four mod five. Uh, and then if you just do a very small change, you replace this n squared by n times n plus one, then you will get here on the right hand side uh, powers or exponents congruent to two mod five and congruent to three mod five. Uh, and these identities were actually first, uh, so they were stated in some of Ramanujan's first letters to Hardy. And uh, Hardy had no idea how to prove them. And Neither had Ramanujan at first, uh, but Ramanujan did find a proof. And then later, uh, they were kind of surprised that this actually already appeared with a proof much earlier in the paper by Rogers. Um, so the, these are kind of the Rogers from Ramanujan identities. And then there's like lo lots and lots of related identities that are usually called Rogers, Rogers Ramanujan type identities. Uh, and then, I mean, obviously, if we want to talk about such things, then we need some notation to shorten formulas. So this is the standard notation we use. So uh, a q sub n will be this so-called q-shifted factorial. So you start with 1 minus a, and then in each step, you uh, take q to the power j here. And here's n factors. And here, n could be infinite, and then, of course, you take the infinite product. And sometimes you want to consider product of many such things. And, and then I use this condensed notation that if I have several a's before the semicolon, it just means you take a product of a number of such products. Um, so in, in this notation, you can write the Rogers from other identities quite compactly like this. So this is the left hand side we had before. And then here, here you see this. Uh, Q and Q4, and, and you should shift all the time by five, so you you're, uh, you have something with exponents of Q congruent to one and four mod five here, two and three mod five here. 
So you, you, you have to kind of interrupt if you have any questions because I mean now I can't see you really. So I don't, it's hard for me to see if things are clear or not. Uh, so, so please just interrupt if you have any questions. Um, and then one reason this is in, uh, interesting is that they have some combinatorial or if you like number theory interpretation. Uh, so in the first, I just do it for the first identity. Uh, so in the first that you, ha you had this, um, in the right hand side you had these infinite products here. And what you can do is that you just expand every factor here as a geometric series. So one over one minus Q, you get one plus Q and so on, all powers of Q here. And, and this one will give you all powers of Q to the six. Uh, and so on. The next one is uh, q to the 11. And then you have, of course, the same thing for these things that are congruent for four or five. Um, so you have this, this big infinite product of infinite series. And then you can imagine that you just multiply together all this and get the power of the q. Uh, and, and then to create a q to the n here, it means you have to represent n uh, as a number of ones, a number of sixes, a number of 11s and so on, and then a number of fours, a number of nines and so on. Uh, and that's what we mean by a partition. And in this case, um, you have to partition n into parts, and the only parts that are allowed are congruent to one or four mod five. Uh, so in the infinite product, uh, the coefficient of q to the n is the number of partitions of n into parts that are congruent to either one or four mod five. Um, and then you can do the same thing for the left hand side and here I skip some details so it, it's not hard but I didn't want to go into the details here. Uh, so you can figure out that the left hand side here is a generating function uh, for some other numbers uh, that count the partitions of n uh, without repeated or consecutive parts. Uh, I will make an example to make clear what that means. Uh, so the Rogers Ramanujan and identities state that the, these two numbers are the same. Uh, the number of partitions with these congruence conditions is the same as this, the number of partitions with this uh, other condition on the parts. Uh, so I just made a small example because it's so nice. So I took the partitions of six. Um, so you can check that there's 11 partitions of six. So you can you can split six into one part, that's allowed. So you just have six. If you split it in two parts, you can write it as five plus one, four plus two, and three plus three. Uh, but you, you don't write two plus four because that's considered as, as the same as four plus two. That's part of what we mean by partitions. Uh, and then you have a lot of other things with partitions in three parts and four parts, and so on, down to this thing where you have six ones. Uh, and if you now count the ones where all the parts are congruent to one or four mod five, it means you, you're allowed to use one, four, and six, but the next one, 10, is kind of useless. Uh, so it's just one, four, and six that are relevant. Of course, if, if you use the six, then there's nothing left. If you use the four, then uh, you have two left and you have to partition that as two ones. And then if you don't want to use six and four, you, you just have this option with only ones. Uh, so there's three of those things. And you also see that there's three that lack repeated or consecutive parts. So for instance, in, in three plus three, three is repeated, so that's not allowed. In this one, two and one is, are consecutive, so that's not allowed. And also one is repeated, so that's uh, also not allowed for that reason. Uh, but you can see that there's three of these things. Uh, so that agrees with the Rogers Ramanu the identities that you have uh, the, the same number of partitions with these two conditions. Uh, and that's really a very non trivial fact. It's, it's not easy to see that by some kind of simple combinatorial argument. Uh, it's quite a deep fact. Um, and I also want to mention that there's some uh, connection to Lee algebras. Uh, so Lepowski and Milne, so you, you might know that Milne was actually Gaurav's uh, PhD advisor. Um, 
So they, they found that these drugs for and identity, they, they appear in, in the connection with FIL algebras, so some infinite dimensional Lie algebras. And later, actually, Lepowski used this to do a purely algebraic proof of the Georges Ramanujan algebras. Um, so, in, in some sense, F and D algebras knows about these deep identities. Um, but what's more relevant for what I want to talk about is a much later work by Misra, where he considers a more complicated Lie algebra which corresponds to this affine root system. So, I mean, never mind what it means if you don't know it. It's just some, some more complicated algebra. Uh, and he found some other interpretation of those identities that appears in this algebra. Uh, and that's really what Canada and Russell built upon. They, they replaced this by this so-called A72 by A92. Uh, and that led them to con uh, conjecture a bunch of new identities. Yeah, that they couldn't prove them, for some time nobody else could prove them. Uh, and they also did more. They also did some computer search and tried to find more identities that kind of looked like that. Those that they found them, uh, that gave, uh, that led to even more things. Um, so they, they, these are. I, I want to talk about some of these identities today. Um, so the Canada Russell identities. Uh, so as I said, there's many identities, uh, and what, what I will say will just be relevant for nine of them. So there's nine of them that give closed form evaluation of this triple series, uh, and of those nine, I will actually just discuss two in details in this talk. Yeah, just to limit it a bit. Um, so you see, you have you have some kind of triple series here. Uh, and in the denominator, you see three, so Q, Q here is called a base. So you have three bases here, Q, Q to the four, and Q to the six, appearing together. Uh, and then, I mean, whenever you have a multiple series, what, what's interesting is how, how are the summation indices combined? Uh, and here they are combined in this quadratic power uh, in the exponent of Q, which just depends on the combination I plus 2J plus 3K. Um, and, and then here, uh, I introduce three uh, kind of formal puppy series variables uh, into this thing. Uh, so nine of the Canada Russian identities give closed evaluation uh, for, for this series with various fixed values of u, v, and w. Um, and the ones I want to discuss today are these two. Uh, so it, it turns out that if you have specialized u, v, and w in this way, you get something here. So, I mean, this looks a lot like Rogers Ramanujan thing. So, here you have some of those 12, and you're counting partitions here congruent to 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and 12. Uh, but the result is somehow this more complicated triple series. Uh, and there's another one here where uh, you count 3, 4, 5, 7, and 11, and 12. Um, and I should say that both these you can write with some trouble as. Uh, statements about partitions, uh, but it's really only the first one that really came from Lie algebras. The second one they found just by some computer search, I mean, I guess just uh, plugging in numbers here uh, uh, for the variables, and uh, I mean, try to figure out some cases when, when it, you have, it has a nice factorization. Um, so I thought I will, uh, I mean, the, the, this is not so central for my talk, but just to give you some idea, I will state what the combinatorial interpretation of this first event is. Um, so I have this thing, and as I said, the, the right hand side is easy. The right hand side counts partitions of n, where the parts are congruent to 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8, or 12. What's, what's hard is the left part side here, how to write this thing as counting some partitions. So that, that's what Canada and Russell uh, figured out. They figured out that the left side counts partitions with, okay, so there's no consecutive parts. That's just as in the Rogers Romano identities. Um, the odd parts are not allowed to repeat. That's not so bad. The even parts may repeat, but they may only appear twice. 
And this is the kind of hardest condition that if, if some even part appears twice, then there's another bunch of numbers here that are not allowed to appear as parts. And, and the last one just says that one, one, two, and three are not allowed as parts of your partitions. So then, th this is not at all easy to see, but um, the left-hand side of this particular kind of the Russell identity um, is a generating function for such partitions. So the identity says that those two numbers are always the same. So, and that's of course also a very non-trivial state. Um, yeah, so here's a picture of the, I, I guess probably most of you know what Gramanujan look like, but maybe not what uh, Kanad and Russell look like. So they, they are quite young guys, I think. Um, and uh, some of this has been proved. So in a paper that's yet to appear, uh, Ringman, Jennings, Schaeffer, and Malberg, Proved, uh, they did more, so, that, so they proved more of those conjectures, but of the nine I mentioned, they proved five. Uh, and in every case, the method is to reduce this triple series to a single series, and then they can evaluate some of the single series. Um, and what I did was that I looked like this. Um, I gave some kind of more streamlined approach, uh, and I could actually prove uh, not just those five, but all those nine of them. Um, and for the four new cases, uh, the ones that were not proved before, um, you need some new ingredients. You need something about orthogonal polynomials. Yeah, so here's a picture of Karl Marburg, Malberg and Catherine Brigman together, and there's Chris Jennings Schaeffer, uh, if you want to know what they look like. Um, so the, what I want to discuss now is um, how I obtain this reduction to single series um, from triple series to single series. Uh, and this is based on an integral representation of, of this uh, three variable function, which is not that hard to find. So I will explain how to do it. So the, I claim that this, this triple series is given by this just one variable contour integral uh, and here, so in, in this integrand, there's a lot of poles, but there's some sequences of poles kind of infinity. So you just have to integrate over some contour here, which is inside all those poles. Uh, and then you could say, well, well if, you in, if you don't have any poles inside, then the integral should be zero or something. Uh, and that's not true because of this, um, because of this factor here, that one has an essential sing singularity at zero. Uh, so I mean, that, that's really the, what, what gives, I mean, some, some of that, that essential singularity give, gives the value of the integral. So that there's no poles inside, but that there's a bad singularity in the middle. Um, and how to do this? Well, you just take, I mean, you, you have four factors here, one, two, three, four. Uh, you expand all of them in power series, and that's just some very classical identities that were known to Euler and to Jacobi. So uh, this factor has this expansion. So that's a kind of Q exponential function. Well, this factor is basically of the same type. It's this thing. This is another type of Q exponential expansion that was also known to Euler. Uh, this one, okay, that, that, that's where you have the bad singularity that you have to say uh, expand as a Laurent series. And that's what called Jacobi's triple product um, Okay, so I mean, I, I don't mention things like convergence and so on here, but um, all this can be done uh, for some uh, general enough range of parameters here. Um, so I expand my integral then as a fourfold series. Uh, and then what you get is this fourfold series, and you have some coefficients, and you have some integration where you just integrate a monomial c to the i, c to the 2j, c to the 3 kappa, yeah, c to the minus l. And of course, something like that just picks up the constant term. So it picks up the term with l is i plus 2j plus 3k. And that, then you get a triple series, which is just the definition of f. Um, so in particular, this kind of messy 
quadratic factor, I mean, that, that's the most complicated part here. Uh, that just comes from this one, L times L minus one, where you plug in L as I plus two J plus three K. Okay, so I had this input representation. And then I want to compare this to something else. Um, so this is a standard Q analog of Gauss hypergeometric function, uh, pretty simple Q hypergeometric series. And what I claim is that this function has this type of integral representation, uh, where you again just have to input over some contour which sits inside all of the poles. Uh, and, and this is something you could expect to find in the, in the literature. And actually, Princess Lucy Slater considered very similar integrals in the 50s. Uh, but I, I haven't been able to find this. So I, I think this is actually a new result. Um, and let me how, tell you how to prove it. It's, so it's quite neat. So what I do is that I, I take this integral and then I insert an extra factor here. I insert this extra factor. And then what happens is that the, this factor will have a lot of poles that, if they are small, they sit inside the contour of integration. Uh, and then I expand the integrand as a sum of the residues at all those points. Uh, and then, well, then there's some relation here between D and T, but if they are, if D is close enough to zero here, then the integral is actually equal to the sum of all those residues. So you get the single sum. And that single sum is a so-called three by two series. So just a little bit more complicated than the two by one. Uh, and then you can apply a known transformation formula to such series. Uh, and at the end, uh, you let this number d tend to zero, and then this factor tends to one, so you don't see it anymore. Uh, and the three by two tends to two by one. So that's roughly the proof of this formula. Um, and then what I do is that I, I compare this integral representation to, to this one. And you can see that there, there's some, uh, under some conditions on the parameters, you can make those two agree. Um, and there's actually more than one way this can happen. But for this talk, I only need this. Thing. So if you write down the integral representation of this particular thing, f of u, uh, uq squared, u cubed qq, um, you will get the same type of integral as for the two by one with the parameters indicated over here. Uh, and here, omega is a cubic root of unity. Uh, and you see that the two canal Russell identities I wanted to consider, uh, this one and that one, those you just get by plugging in u here as q to the four or u as q to the cube. Um, so then if you want to prove those conjectures, all you have to do is to evaluate this two by one at the corresponding uh, parameter values. And then, I mean, the, I mean, the first thing I saw this, I thought, okay, so then you're done. I mean, uh, you just have to evaluate the two by one. So then, I mean, you just look that up in a book if you don't know it. Uh, I mean, that's a bunch of evaluations. Um, but what turns out to be the case is that these, these are not evaluations that you find in the book. There are some different things. Um, so you, you have to come up with a proof of how, how to compute this single series. And I mean, basically, that, that, that's what the uh, Ringman of Malberg and Jenny Shepard could do for this first series, but not for the second one. Um, so I want to discuss the first one first here. Um, so in this example, uh, okay, so th this looks a bit complicated, but it's really very easy. So just, um, if you write down what this series means, you see that you could basically comp combine things here with, that there's something here with a plus and something with a minus. You could combine those uh, products into something that depends uh, where, where the shift is like Q to the four, and then you, you can do something similar in the denominator, but I mean, that there's some small parameter shift you have to take into account. Uh, but anyway, it's easy to see that this series is the same as this thing here, just by compar comparing term by term what the left and right hand side means. Uh, so you have to trust me on this or, or you can easily check it yourself. 
Okay, and that's fine because the one phi zero, you can always sum. So that's the so-called cubanomial theorem that Cauchy found. Um, so one phi zero is always given by this formula. So if you apply this here, you get something with this a times this c, so it's q times omega, and then you can take the z from over there here, q square omega square, and subtract something similar. So after clearing the denominators, you have to compute this combination of infinite products. And that's so, I mean, it's also not quite trivial, but it, it's something that's known essentially how to do. Um, so what one way is to get from the quintuple product identity. And I, I want to mention that because it's also something going back to Romanujan. So uh, Watson had wrote a paper about continued fractions that appear in Romanujan's unpublished work. Uh, and he discovered this identity, which is it's usually written like this, uh, which is called the quintuple product identity, because we have one, two, three, four, five things here. Um, and it turns out that if you replace here q by q to the 12, plug in t as q to the 5, and then you can use Jacobi's triple product identity, the same identity I had on the slide previously. Uh, you can apply that in a kind of uh, actually not quite straightforward way, but a little bit more clever way, uh, and sum it and get something of this form. Um, so I mean, th th this is what I had before, right on the previous slide. And on the left, you see, here you see this thing with four, five, seven, eight, that you have in the kind of rust identity. Uh, and of course, the other stuff that, that just comes from the three factors that I ignored. Um, so th this is uh, how you can prove the kind of the rust identity for those particular parameter values. Uh, and basically, um, Ringman and collaborators, they do it in the same way, in some sense, that they also um, have the same type of series, but both this reduction from the triple to the single series and the way they compute the single series are done in different ways. So for, for the single series, they use kind of more algorithmic methods that, so, that, that, that are closer to how you uh, prove things automatically on the computer. So what, what I do here is kind of more classical linking it to this classic identity of Watson. So I think both these approaches have their merits. Um, okay, so that, that's what I want to talk uh, to say about this first kind of the Russell identity. Um, and then I want to talk about the second one. So I think I'm, I'm going quite quickly ahead now, um, probably quicker than if I had an audience. So I should maybe slow down a bit. It, it's great if you ask some questions as well. Um, so for this second result, um, what I need are the Rogers polynomials. And it's also interesting that the Rogers polynomials actually come from the same series of papers where uh, Rogers proved the uh, Rogers and and identities. Uh, one thing that appears here are, are those so-called Rogers polynomials. Uh, and they will appear also in this proof, but as far as I can see, in, in a completely different way. Um, but it, it's kind of interesting. So they, they are also connected in some way to the original Rogers Romanus and um, so what I mainly need for those are two generating functions. Um, so the first generating function here, uh, that's very classical, and that, that you could take as a definition of uh, the Rogers polynomials. Now, now I don't remember, but I'm quite sure that Rogers know, knew about this. I don't know. And the second one looks a bit more complicated. Um, so here you see you have actually um, Rogers polynomials in base Q squared here, and a series here in base Q. So it's something quadratic. Uh, now, but this comes from well, there's some some other more general polynomials called Askew-Wilson polynomials, and there's known quadratic tra transformations linking Rogers polynomials and Askew-Wilson polynomials. Um, so this really comes from a known generating functions for Askew-Wilson polynomials, uh, and then you apply the quadratic transformation and rewrite re it uh, in terms of Rogers polynomials. Um, 
So what they will do is that they will combine these two generating functions in some way. Uh, and I will start with the first one. So, well, th this will be clear in a minute why I do this, but I, I consider it just at this special point when theta is two pi over three. So then this e to the i theta is a cubic root of unity. Um, then this generating function here can be rewritten in a nice way. Um, so we have this thing where omega is a cubic root of unity. And then you can rewrite it like this. So I mean, what, what happens here is that for instance, this product here contains one minus a cubed t cubed. You can factor that as one minus a t times one minus a t times omega times one minus a t times omega squared. And you see that two of those factors appear here. Uh, and the third one, one minus a t, I have divided with. So that appears here. And you do the same thing with t here and t cubed. And then you do the same thing with all, all those things where these guys are shifted by some power of q. And then you end up with this thing. Um, and when you write it in this way, it's quite natural to apply the q binomial theorem. Uh, both this combination and this combination looks like something that you could expand by the q binomial theorem. Uh, and if you do that, you get uh, this expression for the right hand side. So this, um, those two factors to the left. Uh, their power series is this infinite series, and the factors to the right, their power series is this infinite series. And then, of course, you just multiply together. We want the term with t to the n. To get it, we have to take k here as n minus 3l, and we just write out the coefficient. So you get this nice formula for the Rogers polynomials, but only at this special value corresponding to a cubic root of unit. Uh, so this is not something that you could easily extend to some other values of this variable. So you, you have something cubic here where you mix this q and this q squared. Um, and that's what I want to use. Um, and then I turn to the second generating functions. Um, so I, I said before, if we go back that um, to prove the second conjecture, we have to evaluate this type of uh, basic characteristic function. If you just look at the parameters here, um, I mean, then they set up some relation that you get recognized from the uh, second generating function. You have something here with, let's say, an a and a minus a, and here you have something like uh, minus a squared. Um, so it, it's the same thing as you have. Here, basically. Um, sorry, did that, no, no, okay, that, that was also the only, yeah, it's no mistake. Um, so you can identify this function with this type of generating function, um, where you should replace q by q to the half, and then you, in this generating function, you plug in the values. A is q to the three quarters, theta is two pi over three, and t happens to be q to the one half. Okay, so you, you want to compute the second generating function for those particular parameter values. Uh, and then the point is that since, since theta is 2 pi third, um, I can apply this peculiar form that I had before. And I can plug that into this second generating function. So the, the formula can, came from the first one, but I plug it into the second one. And then after you do that, you can change all the summation. You can compute the inner sum. Then you can compute the outer sum. Then you can evaluate the whole thing. Uh, and what you need to compute both the inner and outer sum is this formula known as the Q house summation. Uh, so that's also a very well known classical formula in this business. Um, so if you work out the details that uh, completes the proof uh, of uh, this second, now the Russell identity. And I said that there's four new identities here, and the other three, they are basically based on the same idea, but you need some extra trickery here. You need to manipulate these generating functions in some, some way to get something slightly different out of it. But it, it, it comes from the same idea. Um, and I, I want to say one thing more that 
um, you could you could push this a bit further here so you have um, if you only plug in this into the generated function then you could um, use this alternative expression I have to see uh, and then you can apply the Gauss summation in some a bit more general condition than this thing. So what, what you get this is that then is a transformation formula. So here I just make these substitutions in the second generated function. And then, then in the same way I get uh, this interesting transformation formula between a 251 and a 352. Uh, and you see the basis here are q and q to the six. Um, so it's a sextic transformation, which is something quite rare. Uh, I, I don't think there's many examples of that not in the literature. Um, so I, I just wanted to, I mean, for, for those who like this type of functions, that, that could be interesting to see. Um, so what happened? The, the, the kind of Russell identity correspond to this special case when a is q to the three quarters. Then what happens is that this parameter cancels the term down here and then you can so this this becomes a two phi one that you can again sum and get a closed form expression. Um, so in, in some sense you could say that this kind of Russell identity it, it, it's related to some sextic transformation. So it also kind of hints that it's I mean it's it's something a bit unusual or a bit a bit deeper than some of those other identities. Um, Okay, so th this is just a conclusion. So, um, uh, so I didn't say everything. So, uh, I mean, there's other products of one and type levels that I can get with the same methods that were not conjectured by Knud and Russell. Uh, and, and for most of them, them, I mean, that there's no known connections to the alpha and no, no, no combinatorial interpretations that, that would be really nice if someone can find. You also get some other things like there's some partition identity that Caparelli conjectured and Andrews proved. You, you get the really nice simple proof of that one, which I think is new. But I should say that, that there's lots and lots of Rogers from Amsterdam type identities that I can't get by this method. And in particular, I, I can't prove their original Rogers from Amsterdam identities by this method. So what you can do, I mean, you can apply the method and get some integral representation and, and you can compute the integral in the same way, but then it, it doesn't give you a closed form, it just gives some uh, well-known transformation of the Rogers Ramanujan type sound, which I, I think it's I think it's due to sure actually, I don't remember. But it, it just gives something well known, it just gives the identity, but something uh, less interesting. Um, and if you want to see the paper, it, it's on the archive. I think you can listen. Um, so I, I, this was the talk, and it took way less time than I expected. So I, I think it's because I spoke much faster now. I, I didn't see the audience, and I, I didn't know if you could follow it or not. So uh, I'm sorry about that. It was too quick. Um, no problem. Yeah, but maybe may, may uh, you have some questions. Uh, I mean, we have plenty of time for yeah. questions now, I guess. So we have time for lots of questions. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, can yeah, you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. sure. So uh, you had a six tick, uh, a six tick identity, like a, uh, which was very rare, and uh, from base Q to base six. And I think uh, Dennis Stanton, Mora Dismail, and and. Garrett, I think they had a, a quintic transformation from base yeah, yeah, yeah. one to base five. Mm. In actually, yeah, and could one use there? And they are, I think they obtained it by using also the continuous Q atmospherical polynomials. Yeah, could, I think they used actually some Q Hermit polynomials, but it, it doesn't. Q Hermit, maybe Q Hermit, yeah. maybe it was just Q mm. Hermit. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's right. some closely related family. So it could be related as yes, a special case. So could so are there corresponding uh, Kanada Russell type identities for that quintic transformation? Maybe. Uh, so could one go backwards, given a transformation of that type? 
could one find a corresponding Rogers Ramanujan type identity? Yeah, so I mean, the, the Quinty transformation, it, it implies the original Rogers Ramanujan. Ah, okay, so that's, that's the point of it, but I guess you they, to get more identities. Out. Yeah, I thought I was thinking of maybe a double sum or triple sum identity, yeah. Rogers Ramanujan type identity. Yeah, yeah, I didn't look at it, but maybe you can uh, take the proof and see if you can kind of twist it and, and get also some double or triple sum. So. Okay. I mean, I, I understand the question, but I, I have no idea. Might be not Hello? so easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell more about the orthogonal polynomial part that you said uh, during the talk? And, and thank you for the wonderful talk. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I mean, this, um, this, this Rogers Polonis, they are orthogonal, but in some sense, I'm, I'm not using it, so. Oh, so the, these are the orthogonal polynomials, uh, C and yeah. X, A, A by Q. And yeah. uh, I mean, how do they get related to other classes of orthogonal polynomials? Is there any relationship, like uh, some polynomials are interrelated by some transformation or the other? Uh, yeah, so one way to get this by comparing, I mean, then, then you use those values, you can compare okay. the weight function of the polynomial. And so, what is the weight function for this? Um, so it, it's some infinite... I mean, for orthogonality, for orthogonality, what is the weight? What is the measure? You, you mean for the for those yeah, polynomials? Yeah, uh, when, uh, when we consider a class of orthogonal polynomials, there is certain yeah. weight with this uh, and uh, measure with respect to which orthogonality arises. So I'm just asking for this class of orthogonal polynomials, what is the weight? Yeah, yeah, so the, this weight was found by Eski and Ismail, and I'm not sure. Uh, so I, mean, I, I probably don't know it by heart, but it, it's some, it's, it's some infinite product. Um, <laughs> Isn't it the famous ASCII Wilson integral involved in that? Or? Yeah, so it, it's something like you have the. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, uh, you. You have something like this, I think, and something like. No, I, I'm sorry, I can't. I, I can't really reconstruct this um, out of my memory now. I mean, I. I, I should know, but, uh, sorry. Maybe you can just give the reference. Yeah, yeah, so you can, uh, I mean, maybe we can even check it. I mean, now we have. Uh, well, it's there in Gaspar Ramon for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, so it's not. Yeah, yeah, I tried to find something on the internet. But it, it, it's a good uh, question. I, I could, uh... So can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, this is Arvind. Uh, so could you go back to your F, uh, U, V, W, and the integral representation? Uh, wanted to clarify something there. Um, yes. Um, uh, so could you repeat the question? I know I was. Sorry? Uh, just repeat the question, please. I'm just, uh, could you just show the integral representation for F, U, V, W? Yeah. Um, so it was. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the, yeah, the next page, yeah. Yeah. So somehow you seem to have uh, transferred the U variable and the V variable downstairs and the W variable upstairs. Was this, uh, I mean, somehow you have broken the symmetry, right? So the, the, Q, the Q product involving U and V are in the denominator, whereas that in, involved in W is in the numerator. 
Uh, yeah, so I think the way to look at this is it's just power series. So you expand this. I mean, this this is analytic near z is equal to zero. So you expand it right. as a power series in z. But then, of course, you will come together with z. Yeah, but I'm asking. Uh, this is not the same. Certainly. So, right. This is not a unique uh, choice, right? You you could have done it some other way also. So I'm I'm wondering if this was a, a very clever choice that helped you make the proof uh, go through, or was it the natural thing to do? No, I think it's quite natural because I mean I know that uh, such an integral, if you expand this as a Laurent series, it picks out the constant term basically. I mean, that, right. that's all I do. I, I expand I the integral here as a Laurent series. No, no, I understand that this works. I'm just asking whether there was a specific, some thought behind choosing this specific integral representation or was it the natural one? I mean, a priori, you, you V and W are in, on the same footing somehow when you look at the infinite series, right? Mm, no, because... Um, yeah, I see what you mean. So they are not in the same foot because you have in W you have this um, this quadratic term. Yes, they're not. That exactly actually makes it an, so it's an entire function in W. Uh huh. Uh, but in in U and B it's not uh -huh. an entire function. It's, right, right. You need some condition on U and B for this to converge. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, no. Okay. Okay. So it, uh, yeah, you have this way. Uh, okay. You that also have the three K. But anyway, it's, W is different from U and B. Uh, right. Hmm. So I guess basically what I do is I just, just call this I plus 2G J plus 3K. I, I call that L basically. Right. And then, then I think of it as a quadruple series somehow. Then, uh -huh. then, then you can identify each part here with some. Like you can go backwards from there to there. Right. Think of it as some Q exponential function. I see. Okay. Thanks. What is the intuition? You you know that it has to be something integral, and then you go backwards using these Euler things. Yeah. So I didn't quite is catch it? your question, but I mean, what? Uh, I mean, how do you think that this must be something of this form? Uh, how do how how do you think that this multiple sum has to be some integral of this form? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I know I had used similar types of tricks before in my work, so. Um, but uh, to me, this study came quite natural. But when I see this, I, I kind of think quite quick that it has to be some integral. Uh, I mean, this has to be that there's some set of functions inside it. Is right to this factor. So, mm. so what, what, what was much harder was to realize. Uh, I mean, th this formula was much harder for me to, I mean, come to terms with because. Um, somehow, I mean, the, the, this type of integral you can find in the Gasper and Rachman book, but, but you, you don't find this type of answer for the integral. So. No. Yeah. So I think that this is a hard thing and a more innovative uh, integral to, to write on. Hjalmar, uh, I had a question. First of all, a very nice talk. Uh, yeah. What I wanted to uh, ask was, is there any uh, attempt through combinatorial techniques that anyone has made? Because I, at George Andrews' 80th birthday conference in 2018, I guess, uh, there was a a student, uh, a Turkish student, I forgot his name. He was, uh, he, he gave a talk on Canada cell conjectures and there he was having some sort of combinatorial techniques plus analytical techniques both being used. Uh, yeah. I forgot his name. Yeah, but do you know if there is any combinatorial advance that has been made uh, or combinatorial attempt uh, in this direction to prove the comparison? Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. yes. I mean, that there is a paper, so that this guy called 
Kursungus or something. He has maybe that's the person. Kan Kan Kursungus. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember his talk, uh, and he had some combinatorics also apart from analysis in there. But yeah. he was not proving the conjectures. He was just getting some equivalent statements, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, that's all. I mean, it, it was some time since I looked at that paper. But that's also how I remember it, that he, does, he doesn't really give a combinatorial proof. Okay. Yes, uh, can I ask? Yes, yes. yes, you see the 